Hey guys, and welcome back to Agrarian Skies. Now, since the last episode, I've done a bit of work off camera to get deep storage unit automation up and going. Um, because there's a few things I want to start just pouring into deep storage units, like cobblestone, for instance, coal, um, as well as some of uh, my organic products, like the carrots and the melons that are, just seem to be piling up a little too high. Also, I need to collect a lot of oak wood for VacQuest. So having deep storage units so I wouldn't really have to regulate my production anymore would be really nice. So if I walk over to a craft external, I should be able just to tell it to make some. So I've already made four because I tested it out. Um, but let's see if this works again. So I'm just going to say make one deep storage unit, but it will make four because the recipe actually creates four. Uh, can I go to that? Yes, see? So you get four from it. So let's go and see what happens. Hopefully this works. <laughs> it's been a couple days since I did this, so we will have to check. Okay, it says making deep storage unit, but nothing is actually happening in here. So I guess we're going to have to check. Let's see what is up with that. Maybe it's just a little delayed. Okay. Oh! So it is doing that. For some reason, it's just not displaying everything here. Okay. So, actually, did it just finish? Oh, wow, that was quick. <laughs> I was hoping we could walk through this, but it looks like it's a lot more efficient than I thought it would be. So I'm just going to take you guys through all the different steps of making this thing that I've automated. And this shouldn't take too long, and then we could start storing things in. So to make these, you need plastic sheets, which I've already covered the automation of those. You need reinforced strong boxes and tesseract frames. Now, for reinforced strong boxes, you need hardened glass and a hardened strong box. I've fully automated my hardened glass production, and I'll show you guys how I've done that. Let me just double check in here. Okay, so it's not in here as you can see. So when I ask it to create hardened glass, it doesn't say, okay, craft hardened glass. Instead, I have a system up here telling it to always have a certain amount of hardened glass. Oh, I went down, didn't I? A certain amount of hardened glass in the inventory all the time. So, is it this guy, this induction smelter? Hmm. <laughs> you know, I kind of forget where I place this machine. Oh boy, things are getting a little complex. It's probably over here. Oh, well, that's sand. Okay, here's an induction smelter. Yep. So you see, basically how this induction smelter works is I have a basic export bus here that always exports lead ingots into this green slot. And then I have another precision export bus that will export pulverized obsidian um, if it gets a redstone signal into this slot here. And that redstone signal is controlled by ME level emitter, which sends a signal if there is less than 256 hardened glass in my ME system. So that's actually part of the reason why I was able to craft those deep storage units so fast. It's because the base components to make them are always buffered in the system. Um, the alternative way of doing this would be to use the uh, kind of the crafting computer here and just make every single hardened glass one by one when you need it. But by banking 256 in the system, the crafting goes a lot faster when you send it a crafting task. So yeah, this thing will just keep on putting Paul Rice Obsidian here as long as there isn't uh, enough uh, hard glass in the system. Now the way I export this pulverized Obsidian is I don't have something like this set up similarly for pulverized Obsidian because, well, you know, I, I can... Like the only thing it's really useful for is this task here. So I can just craft it whenever I need to replenish the 256. I don't really need a buffer of a pulverized obsidian. So what I have is I have this guy set to move single item slash craft. And what that will do is if there is pulverized obsidian in my ME system, so let's check. Nope, there isn't. Uh, but if there was, it would take it out of here and it would put it into there. Now, if there isn't any pulverized obsidian in the system, what it will do is it will look for a crafting recipe. Now, there isn't one in here because it's not something you craft. It's something that's produced 
by a pulverizer. So what I've done instead is I've put an encoded pattern into one of these pulverizers up here. I think it's probably this one. Yep. To tell it how to make pulverized obsidian. All right. So that's a nice way to always have this hardened glass in your system. And that helps with a lot of other uh, thermal expansion items as well. It's not just uh, for deep storage units. All right. So what else do we need to make this deep storage unit? So that's for reinforced strongbox. We need a hardened strongbox, which requires invar and a regular strongbox. Now, occasionally I do get some invar produced automatically through my smelter, just because, you know, sometimes these ores just melt and they just happen to mix together. But that's not very reliable. So instead for that, I've done a similar thing where I will tell my system to pulverize um, nickel and iron, which are the components to make invar. Oops. So if we go here and we go here, we look at invar. Now you can make it by smelting invar blend, which is made from two iron and ferrous metal. And ferrous metal and nickel are the same thing, okay? So all that I have is I have upstairs more of those ME interfaces telling it how to produce these two pulverized uh, ingots, um, just like what I had for the obsidian. And then that will get sent the Invar blend, which there's a crafting recipe here for. See, so I've told it how to make Invar blend, and it will make that, and it will send it to a redstone furnace to automatically turn it into the ingots. Okay. Now there's a bit more to this recipe. This is actually a pretty complex recipe to automate. But if you can automate this, it's like you want to do it. <laughs> it will save you a lot of time. Okay. The next thing to make is a strong box, which is just a chest and tin. And by now you guys should basically know how to automate that in the system. So great. We're done with these two primary components. The last thing we need is a tesseract frame, which I've also fully automated. Um, so the first thing to do was to automate the tesseract and empty tesseract frame production. Um, because I have the hardened glass already automated, I don't really need to worry about that anymore. Diamonds are just something I have in my system. However, I need endurium ingots. And first it's like, oh, how do I produce those? Well, let's take a look. So to make an endurium ingot, you need endurium blend plus pyrophium dust. And these are two pretty complex things to make. So there are a few steps involved in the automation of each of these. For the Enderium blend, it's three tin, a shiny metal, and a resonant ender bucket. Now, you'd see me like, oh, how do I get the resonant ender in a bucket? Well, I haven't been doing that. Instead, I'm using the ME fluid crafting chamber. So here I've put a recipe in a pattern encoder. Oh, I guess I can't. Oh, I can put that in there and see it. Okay. So I put the recipe in here. So a bucket of resin ender, three tin, and a shiny metal. All right, and then you throw that into the crafting chamber. And whenever it needs to craft something, um, task of anything, it will go through here to make it. Now, to actually get these ender buckets, all you need to do is just to put some resin and ender in your ME system. And the way I've done this, it's actually pretty simple. Oops, I always go down <laughs> for whatever reason instead of up. But I've taken a magma crucible, and what that magma crucible does is it takes in um, ender pearls from the back, and it just melts them up. And then the resonant ender, it's not outputted directly into my ME system, because that would eventually flood it, because I really have tons of ender pearls. So instead, I'm putting into this ME Certus tank. And I thought these ME Sanders tanks would actually connect directly to an ME cable, but it doesn't actually seem to work for me for whatever reason, so I have a storage bus on top. Maybe I'm trying to connect them wrong, but hooking up an ME cable to this did not connect it to the system, so I'm a little confused about that. But anyways, you don't even need a ME Sanders tank here. You can use an open blocks tank. Um, I could even use uh, like the thermal expansion tanks, like the hardened tanks, those portable tanks, or whatever. And this would work. So basically, resin enders put up into the tank, 
and then I have a storage bus here that connects the storage of that tank to my MU system. So that's how my system gets the resin ender that's necessary for this crafting recipe. Now to get the pulverized tin and shiny metal, it's the same thing as what I did with uh, the iron and the obsidian. It just pulverizes them on command with uh, ME interfaces upstairs. And I'll quickly go up there and show you guys all these guys up here. So I have all these pulverizers here. You see I got iron. Oh no, that one is certus quartz. Here was a pulverized obsidian I showed you previously. And here are the tin and silver and various other things I need to pulverize. So I just got those there. It's not particularly quick to do it like this, but if I needed like a lot of those pulverized metals, I'd set up a fully kind of continuous automation system with a level emitter like what I have here for hard glass. But I don't really need that much of the pulverized metals, so I can just kind of have a craft on command for now instead. So sweet. And yeah, that gives us the Endurium blend, which just gets automatically sent to a redstone furnace to give us Endurium ingots. And we are actually almost there. The last thing, so we got, yep, the test rack frame. This will be produced by the system. Now the last thing to fully automate here is we got to pump resin ender into the test rack frame. And that's actually really easy to set up. So always go down first. Um, <laughs> so what I have beside my magma crucible, the melt standard pearls, is I have a fluid transposer um, that's filled with resin ender. So this magma crucible both outputs to the top to this tank and to the side to this fluid transposer. And whenever um, a test rack frame needs to be filled with resin ender, it's automatically just sent here through this uh, ME interface. And we get our test rack frame. And that is how you automate the production of deep storage units in your ME system. And it's complex. And uh, I know for some of you who aren't like 100% versed on how you know these ME systems work, this might be a little confusing. And I apologize if I haven't gone through every single step one by one, but it would actually be kind of boring and repetitious. And I feel like you best be learning it, just trying to figure it out, you know, yourself, like step by step. And that's what I do. I just go through this. I find the most simple component, the most basic thing, like the strong box. I'm like, okay, how do I automate this? Step one. And then I'll go through it and I'll be like, all right, hard strong box. How do I automate this? Well, I got I made bar. How do I automate this? I mean, that's the next step. Oh, how do I make the bar blend? And it's a lot of steps, but it is worth it in the end. So let's uh, eat a burger to celebrate and start unloading things to deep storage units. So we'll take these guys and we'll also grab some of these storage buses. Some of these laggy storage buses that I was avoiding for a while. And we can start dumping items into them. I'm not really sure where I should be placing these things. Um, hmm. I guess I can, oh, I like how this is connected. Maybe, oh, I guess I can remove some of these. Uh... <laughs> yeah, all these ME cables aren't really necessary here because these terminals transmit the ME signal as is. So you just need one connect there and one there. Okay, so these cheap storage units, oh, maybe I'll just place them like so, one, two, three. Or then similar thing on the other wall. One, two, three, four. You can probably hear the mobs going crazy underground there. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to connect the storage buses up to these things. Three, four. Okay. And items might start blipping in and out of these array. Well, I hope they don't. Okay. And now we can start offloading certain items into them. So one thing I really like to put in there is just cobblestone. Because if I'm going to do this quest for this octuple compressed cobblestone, I better just start 
collecting my cobblestone ASAP. So, four of a hoarding. Open. And it's this stuff. No. This stuff? Where is it? Cobble Gen Madness, Octuple Compressed Cobblestone. So, yeah, I'm going to have to also up my cobblestone production, so you guys don't, don't need to tell me this, because just having two igneous extruders, do this will probably take, I don't know, around a month or three or four of continuous play to fill, uh, to get enough cobblestone to make that. So I'm going to have to set up a better cobblestone production system. But first, let's just set this thing to dump cobblestone to here. So bi-directional, except some listed items. And storage priority is 64. Okay, nothing is currently going into here, but that's okay. Um, we're going to just want to start to take it out of the system and dump it into there before anything else. Um, I'm actually not producing any more cobblestone right now because I have it controlled with ME level emitters. So let's grab an export bus and start dumping all of this cobblestone into there. Okay, and before you dump it into here, you want to change this so it's insert items only. This will not actually insert items. It will only insert the items if new things come to your system, but it will prevent it from taking items out when I connect this uh, export bus. Okay. Oh. Well, we want to move, remove all that. Throw that guy on there. Move stacks of items. And, oh, I do have this ammo cable here. Okay. So they should start piling up with cobblestone. And these things, you know, I actually forget how much a deep storage unit can hold. But it's a lot. It's like billions or trillions of items. Does it, will it tell me through NAI? Nope. It won't. But that's okay. So we'll let this pour in. And once all 15,000 are in there, then, um, yeah, we can remove that and we can start piling some other item into there. Hmm. I'm actually a little concerned that that's not showing what's in the deep storage unit. Maybe it's because it's not set to bidirectional. Yeah, okay. So that's fine. Um, though I don't think this will pile up. Oh, no, okay, it's still piling up if it's bidirectional. Um, eventually, this will actually start looping. Um, but as long as it all goes in here first, and then I could shut it off after the loop, that's okay. So sweet. So we got the cobblestone going a little better. Let's find this guy here. It's set to stop producing cobblestone, and we'll turn this off. Um, or we can just set this number to be something ridiculously high. Like We'll just go like this. There we go. <laughs> so it will try to produce one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, so about a trillion cobblestone before it shuts off, which I think is enough for request. I don't know. I really need to look into how much these deep storage units store. <laughs> All right, next quest. Now my redstone production, it's not super high yet, but it's getting better. So let's look at some of these liquid quests. The go with the flow, because I think a few of these things I was pretty close to being able to do. Okay, so there's fueling the void. Biofuel, we're not there yet. Jelly cryophium. This is actually something we could probably start producing. Though I'm not sure I quite have enough redstone. So let's take a look at the fluid energy. Okay, destabilize redstone. You need 50 buckets. That's not a lot. We can just go do this quest. Because I think that is actually 80 buckets there. Hmm, maybe, maybe not. It's pretty close either way. So let's grab that little doohickey for completing the quest and just start pouring into it. Um, and I'm actually doing this uh, because a viewer recommended that I do this. So all credit goes to you, buddy. Okay. So let's finish this quest. 
So which is my fluid transposer? Okay, this is a redstone fluid transposer. I can't actually <laughs> tell this output. Oh no, I want the magma crucible. Jelly cryopium. Okay, here's the redstone one. So I can put this quest delivery system just right here. Okay, not currently bound to the quest. So let's go here. Let's select task. Okay, and now we have the fluid energy connected to here. And there's already 10 buckets in here. So this quest will be done really soon. All we have to do is to tell it to output to this side. And there we go. Quest is on its way to completion. Nice. Okay. What other ones? Ethanol? I haven't started to do biofuels. Stick situation. Oh, honey. Hmm. Ooh, Scoopinator MX2000 Turbo Purple Princess, which will help us complete the Purple Dice quest, even though we have Jaded Bees, which will also do that. This is actually a good quest for us to do as well. Let's, uh, so how much do I need? I need 100 buckets of honey. Let's go take a quick look and see how the honey situation is going. Because I've been processing a lot of honey and doing nothing with it, so there must be a fair amount. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so each one of these blocks is 16 buckets. So we have six on each um, level here, and we have one, two, three full levels. So that's six times three, which is 18, and 18 times 16 is definitely more than 100. So we can also complete this quest as well. So maybe what I should do is just make a second quest delivery system. Uh, really quickly and yeah start pumping things into that as well so let's go set patterns for quest delivery systems oh okay that's really oh i need to make a quest book to do that okay we'll do the quest book pattern first encode okay and we'll encode this one though i'm going to want to change out these planks for uh oak wood planks before i encode that pattern so we need Oak wood planks. Just because I want it to be using planks, I will always have in my system. I'm never going to stop making oak wood. Um, it's just to get wood to have around for crafting. Okay, encode. Sweet. And throw those in here and ask for the quest delivery system. Begin. Sweet. Okay, now we just need. Fluid act. and oh, I'm also going to need like a, a torch or a lever, redstone torch. Or, actually, I kind of like to use levers more. Let's use a lever. Okay, so we'll run over to the honey place and we'll get that honey going. And yeah, this should start to satisfy a few quests. Oh no! Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know where he spawned from. I removed the magnum torch because unfortunately it was preventing guys from spawning in here at some point. Um, so I'm going to have to figure this out. Um, unfortunately, the range for magma torches is a lot higher than what it's supposed to be, or at least what it says on the wiki. The wiki states that the range of magnum torches is only 64 blocks. However, it's actually 128. Um, at least on the horizontal component. Um, and I, I can verify this. I've, I've actually looked through the source code and it definitely is 128. Surprisingly, it's actually only 32 on the vertical component. That's why my first kind of mob farm, I was able to set up really high there and it wasn't affected by that uh, magnum torch that was only 64 blocks away. However, when I made a second mob farm directly underneath it, this guy wouldn't work because that magnum torch is actually on the same level about as this. So, yeah, um, I gotta find some way to deal with this magnum torch situation. I guess I can always build platforms farther out and place the torches on there, or even just use chandeliers. But for now, let's get this honey a flowing. Okay, so quest book, honey, select task, find it here, and start pouring it out. Nice. All right. 
Ah, uh, we should check on these other things that we bought. Oh, Enderman. Give me your pearls. <laughs> oh, beheading. Nice. Oh, yeah, you guys might notice I got new tools, and that's because I died. Um, wasn't really my fault, though. I glitched out. I was uh, jumping on conduits and breaking them, and I broke the conduit. I didn't break the ground underneath, but I fell right through the ground, and I died, and I lost everything. So that actually makes me kind of happy that I'm not playing hardcore mode, because if I was playing hardcore mode, I would have basically died to a glitch in the game. So, oh, that cow, they keep on escaping from the pen. Gotta fix that problem. Even, like, somehow we're getting through the fences. I made the fence a whole level, level higher, and they're still getting out. Anyways, let's go over here and make sure. Okay, so all the storage is in here now. So that means we can remove this export bus. Cool. And this guy is set to bidirectional. And yeah, the priority set high, so cobblestone will always go into here. Nice. And that only says 15k. Uh, it hasn't got higher, because that's just where it rounds to. All right, so we gotta really run upstairs and make sure we haven't pumped too much excess redstone into this thing. Okay, so we're at, we're really close. We're at 88% complete. Um, and while this is finishing. We can go and we can take uh, a quick look at the quest book and see if there are any other quests. Oh, the honey one's done. Uh, okay. Oh, got to stop pumping honey. <laughs> that was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. I didn't expect it to flow so fast. Oh, <laughs> and it actually emptied out. Oh, well, I lost a bunch of honey. That's okay. It's not the biggest deal. Oh, I got to get upstairs. Otherwise, I'm going to start losing redstone as well. So once I do that, then we can go check on both these quests and see if there's anything else we can complete. Um, oh yeah, you guys might notice my lag is way better. There's still a tiny bit of minor lag, but it turned out it was almost entirely due to lighting issues, and I just turned the lighting down a little, like not the brightness. I mean, if you go here and you go to Options, Video Settings, and there's a smooth lighting, I changed it to Minimum for Maximum, and yeah, it looks just as good, pretty much, and like you guys won't be able to notice any difference on YouTube, that's for sure. And the lag is gone. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what was causing these uh, excessive lighting calculations, but hey, I'll do that some other time. First, let's shut this off. Okay, that's finished, so stop your output. We probably lost a bit of redstone, but not the biggest deal. And let's go get our quest rewards. Oh yeah. So... Honey collection. And, well, full heart, I want the rewards back. Why can't I get the reward? Honey collection. Oh, I have to pick one. The. Oh. Well, I don't really need the scoop. Don't really need the purple princess. We have jade princess. So let's just go for rewards back. We might get lucky. Get something better. All right. What do we get here? <gasps> oh, aura nodes. That is awesome. Wow. I haven't even started with Farmcraft, and <laughs> this will accelerate it so fast like you wouldn't even believe. Like, you know what? Maybe next video is going to be a Farmcraft magic video. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Well, we'll keep those guys for safekeeping. Um, they're not anything until you actually put them down. And we'll build like a cool little uh, wand charging station for them as well. You know, the chances are half of those nodes probably won't be that good. But, oh, fluid storage unit. Nice. Well, I'm happy about that. We'll put that into our ME system shortly. All right, let's take a look at the redstone quest. Oh, yeah. Never redstone ore. No words back. So the thing is, I don't, I don't know. What can I use this for? Is there anything special I can use it for? Uh, never redstone ore. Uses. Well, I can make redstone from it. I can get rich slag, or I think maybe even cinnabar, which allows me to increase my. Uh, 
output of certain ores, but it's not really that useful. So I'm just going to go for rewards bag again. I like the surprises. So we got oh, a couple more hearts to put on the wall. <laughs> and let's check out the rewards bag. <laughs> oh, you know what, guys? This is a sign. But let's savor the sight for a second. And yep, this is a sign that it's time to get going on some farm craft. Next episode, though. Okay. Um, yeah, give me one second. I just gotta check how much time is left, and then if there is, we'll get to some more quests. Unfortunately, guys, it looks like we've reached the end of the episode. Oh, you know what? That's too bad. I really enjoyed this episode. <laughs> a lot of rewards, surprises, just getting things done. But anyways, next episode should be pretty cool too. Maybe we'll claim some more rewards, get working on some farm craft. But either way, I hope you've enjoyed watching, and yeah, we'll see you next time.